Rebuilding a Stuart Score engine, part five. Reassembling the second half of the engine. The operation is almost identical to the one shown in part four, with the exception of the position of the slide valve. The valve was the wrong way round inside the steam chest, so it was impossible to time the engine correctly. I corrected this problem and now the engine runs perfectly. Even though I repaired the cracked steam chest, I wanted to fill in the cracks on the top. And for this I'm using some cyanoacrylate adhesive. And to apply this I put a small amount on a piece of sandpaper. And then using a small allen key I transferred this cyanoacrylate adhesive into the cracks on the top of the steam chest. And now it's gasket time. But unfortunately these gaskets do not fit on the engine. I don't know why these gaskets from Stuart Models don't fit on the engine because the holes are definitely equidistant and they look to me to be in the right place. The original gaskets fit okay, but they are a bit old, so I have a choice. Either use these and hope they don't leak, maybe use some gasket compound and not silicone rubber to seal them if they do leak, or I can make some more. These are very small 7BA bolts, so it's really important not to over tighten them. The last thing you want at this stage is a sheared bolt in one of the cylinder covers. I'm going to set the valve timing at each side of the engine, and then hopefully, when they're connected together, it should run quite well. This brass inlet fitting is not a quarter by 32, it's one I made for a Mamod steam engine that I was testing but it screws into the steam chest sufficiently for this test. And here we go. Obviously with only one side of the engine connected up, dragging the dead side, I have to start it by hand. Even though the engine appears to run okay, I can hear that there's something wrong. The slide valve is in the wrong way around, and this means that the valve timing is very retarded. I'll put this problem right shortly, but I'm going to move over to the other side and put the valve in the right way around. This side is more or less exactly the same as the other side, so I'm not going to labour the point. The studs are in place, and here I'm packing the valve rod gland, once again using Teflon coated yarn as I showed in episode 4. This, by the way, is how I fit steam chest gaskets. I put them on the studs, and then I rely on the steam chest to push them evenly into place. That way there's less chance of them tearing. This slide valve is too tight on the drive block, so I'm filing the centre and reducing the thickness of the drive block on a piece of 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper. Originally these slide valves were such a tight fit on the drive blocks, they were permanently held against the port face, which is why the engine ran when compressed air was connected to the exhaust. The valve drive blocks must not be tight in the slots in the slide valve. I've repaired many engines where this has been the primary cause for concern. If the slide valve is tight on the slide block, it can also be held off the port. Then any steam admitted to the steam chest just blows through to exhaust. Here I'm connecting the eccentric rod to the valve fork, and you will notice that the grub screw in the eccentric sheave is exactly at 90 degrees to the crank web. This bolt, by the way, isn't threaded all the way down. If it was, it would be no good for a bearing surface. Once I'd finished this side, I returned to the other side, removed the steam chest cover, removed the steam chest, turned the valve round and put it all back together again. And once again, I fitted the part to take the compressed air line. The compressed air needs to go into this side, just like it did in the earlier test. I've reset the position of the slide valve, but I do need to slightly alter the timing at the eccentric sheave end. I'm about to fit the second cylinder cover, so I'm cleaning up six small bolts. And carefully, one by one, without over tightening any of them, they are fitted in place. Once again, please bear in mind that the test run that you're about to see is only on one side of the engine, which is currently dragging the dead side. I'll stop talking during this test so you can hear the noise that it makes. Now to switch the air supply to the other side.
As you can see, there are some leaks around the cylinder covers. And I can't use the Stuart ones because they don't fit, so I think I'll make some more. But I won't show that, I'll just get on with it. In any case, that will be in the next episode. What I'm doing at the moment is seeing how many of the gunmetal inlet connectors line up perfectly where they're supposed to do, and the answer to that is one. I'm going to refit the aluminium washers that were originally fitted, and the good thing about aluminium washers, on a whetstone you can reduce their thickness quite easily. Once I got the aluminium washer to the right size, I fixed the part in place using some SAS nutlock that I got from Clevedon Steam. It was part of a boiler kit that I assembled, and all the steam fittings were fitted to the boiler just using this stuff. I was a bit sceptical, but in the end I had to admit that it worked very well indeed. For the other cylinder, I also needed to reduce the thickness of the aluminium washer, and here I'm doing just that, and now, as you can see, I'm fitting it. Initially, despite my efforts, I did not make the washer thin enough, and I certainly don't want to over-tighten it and crack this steam chest. So I went back to the whetstone and repeated the process. When you reduce these washers using a whetstone, you get a nice bright patch in the centre of your fingertip. With both of the steam inlets fitted to the steam chests, it's time to fit the steam pipe, not forgetting to put the gaskets in place first. I didn't have to use any other fixings on this engine other than the ones that were originally fitted, and you can tell because these are definitely Stuart bolts. The bolt heads are much deeper than the normal BA stuff that I use. Here I'm fitting the displacement lubricator, I used two aluminium washers and some more SAS nutlock. The next thing to do is to connect the airline to the steam pipe and do some final tweaks on the valve timing. I tend to use my ears for this, you can tell when the steam is admitted, and ideally it needs to be just before top dead centre. The engine bursts into life and there's not much pressure going into it, I'm going to stop talking now and just leave you with the engine running right to the end of the video. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.